What's up, everyone? D Crack here. I'm about to react to another video for you guys. Now, guys, it's been a while since I've reacted to some Mr. Nightmare. Uh, this is this newest video, Three Scary True Lost Phone Slash Laptop Horror Stories. Like always, guys, I'll have a link to the original video down below. Make sure and go show Mr. Nightmare some, some love. Ugh, if I can talk, make sure and go check out Mr. Nightmare. But guys, let's check this out. Mr. Nightmare, Three Scary True Lost Phone and Laptop Horror Stories. A few months ago, I treated my girlfriend to a vacation in Paris. We stayed at some hotel called Hotel Atmospheres. My job allows me to work remotely from my laptop on my own hours, so at some points during our couple days there, I would sit in the lounge of the hotel by the Wi-Fi area to get my work done. My phone started to ring. It was my girlfriend calling me. As I picked up the phone, I went to the nearby room where the coffee was and poured myself a cup. My girlfriend was calling me from the room, talking about the things we should do that day. When I walked back to the lounge area where I left my laptop, I got a sickly feeling when I realized it wasn't there anymore. Ugh. I went first thing to the lady at the front desk to ask her if she'd seen anyone leave the lounge area with the laptop. She apologized and said she hadn't seen anyone. I asked her to check the cameras, to which she responded with there not being any cameras in the lounge area and that she was also not in control of the footage that the cameras caught. No cameras she in the lounge? What? would get in what? contact with her manager, who was not working that day. She offered I submit a lost or stolen property form. I was absolutely disgusted with the service and planned on having a word with the manager the next day. I had no choice but to go back to our room and angrily vent to my girlfriend. She tried calming me down, saying there was nothing we could do about it, and that it was best we just go out and enjoy the vacation I was paying for. As angry as I was, I had to accept that she had a point. We both turned off notifications on our phones so we wouldn't be distracted, something we usually did on vacation. Then we went out and explored a great amount of the city, did a little bar hopping, then got back to our hotel late at night. It wasn't until we finally crashed into bed that I opened my phone to check for new emails and texts and such since I couldn't do that on my laptop now. When I was going through my email, I realized every single email I'd received that day was opened. This included emails from work and a couple relatives. I started to panic. Because so that means someone is freaking accessing his emails through his freaking... Wait, was it... A, what is, I can't remember. Was it his phone or his laptop that was stolen? I think it was his laptop, if I heard correctly. Because I knew how much delicate information I had in not just my email account, but my whole computer, which was signed in when I left it. I basically had all my personal information saved on that computer, including home address, phone numbers, personal pictures, passwords, credit card info, bank account info. I was a fool for leaving it unattended to for even a minute. I immediately changed all the passwords to my emails and other important accounts. That didn't matter for what was about to come, though. After opening my messages app to check my texts since I hadn't been all day, I noticed text from an unknown number. It was a bunch of pictures, pictures that were saved on my computer. Bad, personal pictures that I wouldn't ever want anyone to see. Oh no! And there were pictures I didn't remember taking. Pictures of a hotel hallway and a hotel door. It was our hotel door. There was also a picture of me standing at the front desk talking to the lady about my missing laptop. It was taken from behind the glass door at the entrance of the hotel. Under all the pictures was a text saying, I have all of your info, including your address and your current hotel room. This was sent using an untraceable phone number. Don't bother contacting the police. The rest of the message basically demanded I pay a certain amount of Bitcoin to a specific Bitcoin wallet address or else. It literally said or else. I'm not even fabricating this. I didn't know what else to do besides show my girlfriend the messages as well as the embarrassing pictures. She started to panic more than me, and she honestly just made me even more tense. I left the room to go to the bathroom to think. He was asking for a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. 
But even if I paid that, I had no reassurance that this person wouldn't share those pictures or keep my laptop or do God knows whatever or else meant. I decided I wouldn't pay the ransom. My girlfriend agreed with my decision when I went back to bed. Of course, I was not tired at all anymore. Neither was my girlfriend. We sat up, leaning on the headboard of the bed, talking, thinking, and worrying for a couple hours. Then there was a knock at the window of our hotel room. We both gasped. Well, my girlfriend more so let out a, a short scream. A freaking knock? Oh, hell no. I turned off the lamp so that whoever was out there couldn't see in. I also shut the shade completely. I didn't bother trying to look out there to see who it was. I assured my girlfriend we were safe, though. She whispered we should call the cops or inform the front desk. I told her we would if the problem persisted. I then told her to go to sleep. Meanwhile, I stood in the middle of the room watching over her while also looking back at the window. I got a text. I looked at my phone and it said, I'm looking into your room right now. I'm not playing games. Then there was another knock at the window. I decided to just grow a pair for a couple seconds and open the shade to see who was out there. I pulled the shade open. I couldn't see who it was, but there was someone standing on the other side of the glass looking in. My girlfriend screamed. I told her shh as I pulled it back shut. We packed our things and went to the front desk, telling the lady about the whole situation and requesting another room on one of the upper level floors. She said she would alert the authorities and gave us a room card to another room on the third floor. For the rest of the night, we slept close together. Well, I didn't sleep. I was awake all night waiting for a knock at the door. Morning came and the manager was in. So she took a look at the footage from the previous night. And of course, some guy with a baseball cap covering 90% of his face went into the lounge as soon as I left it to get coffee, then walked out with my laptop. There was only one camera that actually caught the man in the act. She said she would forward all video footage with that man over to the police. We were out of there. I blocked the number that was texting me. I had to accept defeat, but I didn't want to think about it anymore. There was nothing I could do about where those pictures would end up or some random person having my address. I canceled my credit cards and- Man, that's, that's scarier than any horror movie there. Someone having full access to your- to pictures, private pictures, probably between him and his girlfriend, uh, bank information, literally his address, where he lives. That means he could go home from this vacation and that person could literally follow him home. That's creepy. Change my passwords. There wasn't much else that creep could do. However, what really motivated me to share this story with the internet was the fact that three days ago, I got a letter in the mail without a return address. It was addressed to me, and it was a short, straight-to-the-point note saying, I hope you haven't forgotten, I have all of your information still. It was a horrible reminder that someone out there with bad intentions oh, was not crap. only my address, but my pictures, my phone number, and my name. I've been sleeping with one eye open these past I really hate to say at that point, at that point, the only thing, you, you would literally probably have to move, you would have to move, change your phone number. It's not hard to change your number, but move, change your number. And unfortunately, um, tell your bank that someone has your information and they'd have to change your bank information to something that the, the criminal wouldn't know. So change his bank information, his phone number. And unless they, you know, unless they want to stay where they're at, they got to, they would just have to move somewhere else. There's nothing they can do. A few nights. If anything happens, I will update. Man, that one was creepy. There was a time a few months ago that my good friend Ashley lost her phone. I'm her best guy friend, so she hit me up on her sister's phone when she realized that whoever had her phone was reading her messages but not responding. I practically reprimanded her for not having a password on her phone. I suggested using Find My iPhone, but she didn't even have that enabled for whatever reason. I met up with her and decided to text her number. I sent a text saying, please return my friend's lost phone. Within seconds, it said the person read my text, but they didn't respond. So a minute later, I said- 
you know what's crazy? I don't I don't have a password on my phone. I'm gonna actually just watch this video. I'm gonna add a password to my phone. I, I always have my phone with me. I've never lost my phone, but I have my YouTube channel, my emails, all my, you know, someone could go in and delete my whole YouTube channel if they stole my phone. So I'm going to put a code on my phone. Sent a more aggressive follow-up text. I said, we can see that you're reading our messages. If you don't respond, we will brick the phone, track it, and it will be useless to you. Please return it now. The person read it right away and said, good luck. This infuriated me. I tried to respond, but apparently the person turned off the phone. There wasn't anything we could do now. She had find my iPhone off, so we couldn't even report it as lost. I tried to make her feel better and took her out for dinner. When we got back to her house, a light upstairs was on and the garage door was open. Are your parents home? I asked her. Maybe, she said, but they weren't supposed to be back from their trip until the next day. We went in through the garage door and she pressed the button to close it. Then we went from the den to the living room, and she called out for her parents. One of the doors upstairs shut. We could see and hear it. The way her house is arranged allows you to see some of the doors upstairs from the living room. The door wasn't shut forcefully, though. It was shut quietly and softly. Ashley looked at me, and I could see fear in her expression. I told her, wait there, I'd go upstairs and check. So I went slowly up the stairs, down the little walkway, got to the door, looked down at Ashley one more time, then opened it. The room was dark now. I looked for the light switch in the room, but couldn't find it. So I said to Ashley, where's the light switch? Then she screamed, oh my god. She said that she had her address and the code to the garage saved on her phone. It took me a second to put together what she was implying. The code to the then, the code to the garage. From inside the room and oh tried no! Me in. I screamed and tugged away from the grip. I started to slam the door over and over on the arm that was pulling at me, eventually getting them to let go. I heard grunting on the other side. I must have done some damage. I told Ashley to run as I came down the stairs. The front door was only a few feet away, so we got out safely. We got into my car and I called the cops right away. We sat in front of the house in my car the whole time, making sure whether to know he left the house or not. The light upstairs turned on and five seconds later, whoever it was walked to the window and just stood there for a while. Couldn't tell what he was looking at, nor could we see any facial features. They just stood there? These 10 pictures what, to show what? the police when they were to arrive. Then the guy just walked away from the window and the light shut off. Minutes later, two cop cars with their lights on came speeding down the road and stopped in front of the house. I showed them the pictures before they entered the house, and we waited in my car. The cops were in there a long time. They did a seriously thorough investigation of the house. They came back out to assure us it was safe to go back in. We thought for sure they would be able to track the phone now that it was used as part of a crime, but to our surprise, they said there really wasn't anything they could do without Find My iPhone enabled or the phone actually being on for that matter. All they said we could and should do was change the code for the garage lock. I had to figure out how to do that for her. But still yeah, for that, sure, change change, change the garage that code? That's, when her parents yeah. got back the next day, she felt a lot safer. She got a new phone the next day, and we never pursued finding her stolen phone any further. Dang. <laughs> I've never got my wallet or any personal information stolen from me, but that's crazy. March 8th, 2019, on a Friday night. Me and five of my college buddies. March 8th? Jeez, that's like only like a month ago. These had a little night out. Not anything crazy. We just got dinner at some nice restaurant, then we hit a dive bar in the same block. We got a few drinks, played darts, and within a couple hours we were out. It wasn't until we left the bar that I realized my pockets were feeling kind of light. I checked both of my pockets and realized I didn't have my phone. I told my friends to wait as I ran back inside to look for it. I checked the seats at the bar, at the area by the dartboard. I even asked the bartender. He hadn't seen it though. A couple of my friends came in and I asked one of them to call my number, but quickly realizing that was kind of pointless in a loud, crowded bar. I asked the bartender to please call my number if my phone were to turn up. 
Sadly, I knew that was wishful thinking. We traced back to the restaurant to check the table we sat at, and I asked the staff if they had any missing phones. None. So it was safe to assume my phone was taken by someone at this point. But I still remained hopeful that maybe the bar or restaurant would call me the next day. That night, when I got home, I started cleaning myself up getting ready for bed. For some reason, it took me that long to remember I could just use that Find My iPhone feature. I would have to sign into iCloud on my computer to use it. But when I was all signed in and everything, that little map came up on the screen. I was confused when the phone was showing up as right above my house. For a second I felt excited, like maybe I had the phone on me the whole time. I checked the pockets of the jeans I was wearing, but it wasn't there. I had no other pockets. And I knew 1000% I had my phone with me at some point in the restaurant. So how could it be at my house? Maybe someone left it at my front door. So I went outside and checked the stoop and the mailbox. It wasn't there either. Either way, it was insanely late and I was exhausted. As long as it said my phone was currently at my house, I figured I'd find- No, buddy, that means someone's at your freaking house with your phone. They, they know where you live. ...in the morning and figure out what happened. So after coming back inside the house, I did one last loop around the house, turning off all the lights and going upstairs. I sleep with the door open because I live alone. At some point, before finally climbing into bed, I heard a rattle from downstairs. It sounded like the pots and pans rack being banged into. I tiptoed downstairs. I saw that there was a light on down there somewhere. The light was leaking ever so slightly into the living room. I got to the kitchen and no one was in there, but for half a second, I could see the light from my sunroom on. Dude, get out of there. Off just as soon get as I out noticed. of there, dude. I walked through the kitchen to the glass door that led to the adjacent sunroom. I would have to walk inside of there to turn the light on, and there was no way I was about to do that. So I went as close to the door as possible and looked inside. I came close to screaming out loud when I could make out two figures standing in the darkness that was my sunroom. What? They were both standing nearly identically the same way, arms and legs kind of spaced out from their bodies to give an overall wider appearance to their stature. It seemed as though they had their backs to me, as I couldn't see their faces. Only blackness, which I assumed was their hair. I ran to grab the kitchen phone to call 911. I reported a break-in, so the operator said there would be police arriving shortly, who would sneak up to the house, find the point of entry for the intruders, and apprehend them. The operator said the police would call me if they needed to, and asked me to hide in a closet and wait there until I heard the police downstairs. Then she told me to hang up and stay as quiet as possible. Waiting in that closet felt like it was taking centuries, mostly because of the tension of waiting in silence and motionlessness, expecting and dreading hearing any kind of noise. And actually, I did. I heard loud clonking footsteps coming from downstairs. They were coming up the stairs. They got louder and closer. Oh no. To the outside of the no, 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 Ugh, I heard no. The bedroom. I heard doors opening, doors to every room upstairs, until so finally the door to the bedroom I was in opened. I balled up as little as possible in the corner of the closet, tucked under a blanket to hide myself. The closet door opened, and I felt my heart in my throat at this point. I did my best not to move, even though I felt my life flashing before my eyes. The door to the closet shut, and I heard footsteps leaving the room. Then I heard two pairs of footsteps go downstairs. I felt it was finally safe to move and breathe. After a few minutes of silence, the next sounds I heard were the voices of police officers yelling downstairs. I jumped out from the closet and rushed down to them. They entered through the sunroom actually, apparently the same way the intruders did. There were a total of four police officers in my house. The two intruders seemed to be gone, which was no surprise, one of the officers said. Usually the intruders would be out of the house before the cops arrive. So one of them had a notepad in hand and was taking down notes for my description of the whole night. They even took down the specific details of my phone and reported it as a lost item to somehow help with the case. After that, the cops left, but assured me there would be a car patrolling the area all night. 
The next day, I found my phone left on the kitchen counter. I figured they must have left it to avoid being tracked any further, and because it was useless to them. My two friends joked around that the two intruders were simply trying to return my phone and that I should find them and thank them. Nothing has happened since, but it's hardly been a month, so I'm still kind of uneasy about sleeping in this house. Dang, guys, that's creepy. I, I mean, I, I, yeah, I doubt they're... If you're trying to return a phone, you don't break into someone's house. There, there was something going on there. But guys, that was N Mr. Nightmare's new video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure and leave a like. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. If you have any other reactions you want me to, to do, leave a comment down below. But until next time, guys, peace. Go.